will sense the presence of God right where you are and that your heart will be open to what he has to say to you this day. God bless you.
Good morning. It's my privilege to be able to welcome you into the, into the Lord's house this morning and that you're here to join us for worship. We're celebrating a very special event this weekend. It is Jubilee Brass 25th anniversary weekend. We are celebrating 25 years of ministry through this group and that is something special to celebrate for sure. And joining us in, in on this weekend, our special guest is General Linda Bond for this weekend. So please join me in welcoming the members of Jubilee Brass and General Linda Bond this morning. We look forward to their leadership in worship this morning. A few announcements before we begin. Uh, after the service today will be Coffee Fellowship, so please join us down in the gym for treats. Uh, we'd love to fellowship with you down there. As well, soldier and adherent classes are coming up. They start Sunday, October 22nd, so if you'd like more information about that, please connect with Captain Nick or Major Heather and they can let you know more about those classes. Another event that's a big highlight here at the church, um, our annual Trunk or Treat is coming up October 28th. So mark that on your calendar. This is a core family event um, and it's always a highlight of the year. So please take note, uh, there is a Google form to fill out to register for that. There's a link in the bulletin that's online and on our youth Facebook page. So uh, if you need help signing up with that, please connect with our YPSM Sarita or uh, any one of us can, can help you, Captain Nick, Major Heather, or myself can help you with that. As well, mark your calendars for November 12th. Uh, we, are, we have had a few members in our core do a survey with regards to the Natural Church Development Program and on November 12th we will be discussing the results of that survey um, in a luncheon. So next week we will be having sign-up sheets for the lunch, so please mark your calendar. Hope, I hope that many of you will join us as we discuss the health of our church as a church family. For further information on Bible studies, prayer lists, and other core events, please connect with our online bulletin that is emailed every Friday. If you're not receiving the bulletin, send us an email at londoncitadel at dot office at salvationarmy.com or connect with me after the service and I'll make sure that you get it. That's all of our morning announcements this morning. Let's head into worship together. Good morning to you. It really is good to see you this morning and to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we gather for this special morning of worship and the word together in fellowship. You'll have seen, uh, no doubt, the bulletin note last week that uh, Ruth Hammond was promoted to glory at uh, 101 years of age, and she served Jesus the Savior she loved for all of those years. And so it's our privilege this morning to be able to stand and to give thanks to God as we give thanks to Him that she is indeed called home and she is promoted to glory. Can I invite you to stand with me?
we pray together? Lord, today we give thanks to you for life, knowing that it is a gift from you, but knowing also that through Jesus Christ, it is a gift of eternal life. And so, Lord, we thank you today for Ruth, for the life that she lived in service to you, for the many that she influenced by her love and her presence. And Lord, we ask that as she is now home and at peace with you, that you will comfort her family. Bless them this day. May they know your peace of mind and peace of heart in these days of mourning. As we celebrate and rejoice together, Keep us mindful of the reality of the loss of human life here as we lose a loved one. But the truth of the promise that's ours in Jesus Christ of being home in glory with you. Lord, keep us all faithful until our own days come to an end. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And it's my pleasure as well to welcome all of you on behalf of Jubilee Brass. We have had uh, a great time of worship and praise last night. And if you weren't here and you want to hear all about it, if you have one of these, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> and if you don't have one of these and you have a computer, then you can follow it online. But we had a great attendance last night. We had good fellowship, and we had great music. It is our pleasure as well to have with us uh, General Linda Bond. Uh, she came in last night and shared with us in our program, and... Uh, I did an introduction last night and is in the program for this morning. And uh, the extra things that I said about her, for another one of these, I'll tell you that as well. <laughs> but anyway, it's all online, so you can follow it and uh, you'll enjoy what uh, she had to say to us and certainly what she will say to us this morning. We're going to have a good sing as we turn to a song in our songbook that says, I stand amazed in the presence. And I hope you are amazed this morning about the being in the presence of God and uh, enjoying his spirit as he worships, as he gives it to us this morning. So let's stand together. The words will be on the screen. The band will give us a short intro and we will have a good sing together.
another beautiful song that uh, we're going to share as we just quieten our hearts and meditate and come before God asking him and claiming for ourselves this morning every promise that God gives to us. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we can make is only, is only by his grace. Let's sing it together and uh, soak in the words, soak in what God would have to say to us as individuals this morning and let him do his work in our lives. thank you our father because it is only by your grace that we are able to come into your house this morning to worship and to praise you we thank you for your grace your amazing grace which is sufficient for all of us and we thank you for each person that's here this morning that's here to worship you and we continue to pray that as we share in fellowship, we share in worship, that you will share the blessings that you have for us, with each, with each of us. And when we leave here today, we will be able to share that, those blessings with others. So continue to bless us as we continue to worship you and praise you and thank you for your grace which is sufficient for all of us today and every day. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? You know, I am a Salvationist. I guess I've been wrapped in flag, probably, but... All my life, uh, I know the Army does amazing things all around the world. 
And we are known in communities as the Salvation Army that rolls up its sleeves and does such great, great social work, and we do. And we're a people of social justice. Yes, we are. But beloved of God, I somehow think that the soul of the Salvation Army is in its worshiping communities. It's where we sing as we've sung this morning. It's where the word is proclaimed. It's where God's people are enriched and motivated to serve the world. It's the heart, isn't it? And I am so pleased and privileged today to be in this house of worship and be blessed. So thank you for the privilege. The Apostle Paul was giving some good advice to a young preacher, a young man. And I want to preach on this passage today, but I want to read it to you because I think it's a wonderful synopsis of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Titus 3, 1 to 8. So he says to him, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and to show true humility toward all men. At one time, we too were foolish disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. And this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. It was written so many years ago, wasn't it? But doesn't it sound real today? Isn't it relevant today? And I know God the Holy Spirit will make it so in every heart. Amen. In a moment, we're going to receive your tithes and offering. And uh, we will listen as the, we heard last night, uh, Noel Brooks tingled the ivories and did very, very well as usual. And this morning we're going to hear his dad do the playing for us. And, uh, but before that, just let me say, you're all invited downstairs following the service this morning. If you don't come down for cake, donuts, finger food, sandwiches, any of those things, if you don't come down for those things, just come down to have a look because the place is decorated beautifully. And that's only because we have some wonderful, wonderful ladies in the Corps. Last night, if those of you that were downstairs, you saw the beauty of the decorations with uh, Ruth and uh, Marilyn and their team. This morning, the same thing. It's Marilyn and Ruth and their team. So they just reverse roles from last night to today uh, of responsibility. But it is decorated so wonderful, and uh, we just want to thank them so very, very much for their hard work and commitment to serving the Lord in that way. It is wonderful. Now, if the ushers would come forward, we will receive your morning offering.
Father, for the opportunity to give back to you just a very, very small portion of what you grant to us each day. We give you thanks, and we just pray your blessing upon the offering. Pray your blessing on those that will give. And may we give generously because you have given generously to us. In Jesus' name, amen.
still amazes us, isn't it? Well, we're going to have some children's time, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a little bit special for you. So I'm going to ask the children to come up here and join us. No, you've got to come up here, all the way up here, all the way up here. Okay, I'm going to give you one for that hand and one for the other hand. Now, you, the same thing, one for each hand. One for each hand. One for each hand. That's the girl. Now. Okay, now you're wondering what you're going to do with these. Well, you're going to be our fan club this morning. You're going to be our cheerleaders. You see, what's the difference between this group and this group? No difference. No difference? The difference is that they are much, 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 much older than you are. So sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of uh, cheering on. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a nice song. The band is going to lead us. And we are going to go crazy cheering them on as a cheerleader. All right? So... We got to come over here. Some of you come over here and stand around. That a, that, that a boy. Way to go. Now, I'm not going to be down there at the door to give you your treat this morning. But Jill is going to get the basket, and she's going to be there to give you the treat when you go out to Sunday school. Okay? Because I don't want to lose you as my friends. Okay. The band uh, will give us the introduction to number 954. The words will be on the screen, and uh, we'll have a good sing. And we'll go to Cherry Lawn crazy, won't we? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Come over here, so they're band see you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
people were your age, <laughs> as I say, many, many years ago. And uh, they wanted to play an instrument just like some of you and some of you are doing, learning to play an instrument. So they started, some of them started when they were your age, and they kept playing, kept going, kept trucking on, and now here they are still playing their instrument at their age. So we're going to have a prayer. Then the band is going to sing the chorus again, and we're going to wave as you go out to Sunday school. Okay? Father, bless those young people as they leave the sanctuary and go to their own class. May they enjoy the company of each other and the instruction that they will get. May it be a lifelong experience for them as they continue in their work and ministry. Amen. Okay, Mr. Bandmaster, the chorus, and let's wave as we go out. Okay.
And just picking up on that selection, we're going to sing the chorus together in preparation for what God would say to us this morning through the general and the word. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I hope that's the attitude in which we have come this morning. We want to lift up the name of Jesus and tell him again and again that we love you, Lord. Let's sing together. to the band and songsters as they sing those beautiful words. Listen to the harmony, but more importantly, listen to what God is saying through his word, through the words that we sing, I love you, Lord. of our mind to listen to what you would have to say to us through your word this morning. We pray your blessing upon the general as she comes to share with us. May it be thus saith the Lord. Amen. Oh, that was so moving, wasn't it? There's lots of things I rejoice in in the 21st century Salvation Army. I love some of these contemporary songs that pick up the great biblical themes and I've kept faith with the faith. Love them. Our uniform style changes. That's okay. We need to change things, don't we? One thing we cannot change, beloved. We cannot change is our faithfulness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot change it. It is amazing grace. 
And every one of us have to come again and again and again and say, your grace still amazes me. I know there's lots of funerals where people sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I sometimes wonder, do they really believe they were wretches? Because it's amazing. Everybody's going to heaven no matter how they lived. And the Salvation Army has been faithful through the years. I am so grateful to be raised. It's not the only church, but I'm so grateful to be raised in the Salvation Army where I heard the gospel as a child, and I'm still hearing it today. And I do pray, friends, I do pr I'm sincere about this, if the Salvation Army drifts away from the basis of the gospel, I pray that the God will shut us down. Amen. We were raised up as gospel people. We are a Jesus movement. We believe the worst of sinners can be saved. At any age, they can be saved. Several years ago, I went to a core and I met this wonderful man, 86 years of age, make you feel good over there in this band. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, Luke, he got saved at 86 years of age. The officer before me, Luke had married a second time and he came with his wife to the Salvation Army and he really came for the entertainment. He loved the singing. Sat at the back, apparently. That's all he came for. But for some reason, that night, God moved Luke's heart. And he knelt at the mercy seat. And he got totally transformed. He got gloriously saved. He put some of us who'd known the Lord for years to shame. He got saved. I was going away on holidays and I was ready to fly to Saskatchewan. And uh, I got a call and it says, Luke's in the hospital and it's not looking good. And I rushed up to the hospital and he was lying on a stretcher in the hallway. And I went and I was, I, uh, I guess cat. <laughs> and I'm there all apologies. Oh, I said, I'm so sorry. I've got to make a flight. and." No, he said, not to worry. And he puts his hands in the air and he says, my heart is fixed, eternal God. <laughs> fixed on thee. Fixed on thee. When I come home, he's still alive. <laughs> so I better go to the hospital to see what's going on. And I'm getting out of the elevator and he's down at the end of the hall. And I can hear him singing, oh, boundless salvation. <laughs> Oh, it's my kind of salvationist. Wonderful, right? I want you to get saved and changed. And I shall see him face to face and tell the story. What? Saved by grace. How do you choose a message, a topic for a message? Do you ever wonder about that? I found it real easy because he sent me the meeting outline beforehand. <laughs> I said, that's not hard to figure out. They seem to be talking an awful lot about grace in that meeting. But I want to talk about it today. By grace alone. You've heard me talk so much about funerals this last two nights. You think I'm sick, do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, but it is the epitaph will be my epitaph by grace alone. Born by grace, saved by grace, called by grace, used by grace, I'll go to heaven by grace. By grace alone. We sing it all the time in the Salvation Army. But I want to talk to you today about theological integrity. How's that for a big 
title for my first point, theological integrity. Do you know what that means? Well, of course you do. Theological integrity means you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You do not pick out of the gospel all the nice, sweet, sentimental mush. You're faithful to the dark stories in the gospel. And when Paul wrote Titus, he really was. He said, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Theological integrity means you got to tell the truth about sin. You see, you are saved by grace alone. Now that's big. that sounds really sweet, by grace alone. But you know what it means? We need it to be saved. We need it to be saved. Eugene Peterson summarizes that verse by saying, it wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid. I thought, I don't know if I want to say I'm stupid. And stubborn, yeah? Easy marks for sin, ordered every which way by our glands, going around with a chip on our sh shoulder, hating and hating back. We need it to be saved by grace alone. We need it to be saved. We were sinners. We all are sinners. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And some of you have been worse sinners than anyone else. So you think. But no, you haven't. All have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By grace alone, theological integrity means you do as Paul said. You once really were desperately in need of a savior. And then he also says some other bad news we do not like to hear. And you were saved not because of your good deeds. You didn't earn it. Grace is the undeserved favor of God. And I think we find that hard as, as intelligent, middle class, upper class, lower class people. We find it really hard to say, what do you mean? If I go to church, if I give my collection, if I do good, God owes me something. No, he does not owe you a thing. He owes me nothing. And if, in fact, God was so just that he said, let's forget about mercy and grace, you're going to get what you deserve. We're hellbound. Theological integrity says, by grace alone I'm saved, I need to be saved, and I can't do it myself. Now, you're, you're all going to say, we all know that. Yes, we do know it, don't we? I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know, except you may not know the term theological <laughs> integrity. But that's what it is. And here it is again. It, theological integrity by grace alone means you needed a God to come down and put on flesh. You needed somebody to take your sin. You needed Christ himself to pay the price for your sin on Calvary, to shed his blood that you could be saved. God's grace says you are held bound and there's nothing you can do. All the education in the world, all the wonderful professions you may have, all the lovely families you've been raised in, they cannot do what needs to be done in your heart. You need to be saved. <clears throat> so Paul is telling Titus, when, when, when Jesus, when Jesus appeared, God in his grace 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, which he flooded your life with. You were washed. You were pardoned. You were justified. You were renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. All is of grace. You have been saved by grace. I'm not under law. <clears throat> but I'm under grace. Just think about it, friends. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the divine Trinity stretched itself into eternity to save your soul. Your grace still amazes me. And listen what the Apostle Paul said. These things are excellent, profitable for everyone. Well, I thought that doesn't sound very strong. So let's see what other translator says. Philip says, solid truth. Speak about these matters with absolute certainty. A doctrine you can rely on, says the Jerusalem Bible. Trustworthy, I want you to stress these things, insist on these. And the voice says, put it out there boldly. Now listen to the message. I want you to put your foot down, take a firm stand on these matters so that those who have put their trust in God will concentrate on the essentials. I say to you, beloved, the Salvation Army, some people don't, I remember an ex-Salvationist saying, you know, the Army spends too much time making us feel guilty. But I wonder now if we do enough, we talk enough about the need for the saving grace of God. We are saved by grace, and that passage is theological integrity. It tells you the need, and it tells you the means. And Paul is saying to this young man, you need to emphasize this. I wish I was on training college staff again and train preachers. I hope every corps officer feels the burden of the Lord when they preach. I pray that every corps officer who stands in a congregation will have passion about the scriptures. You will really believe there's a divine anointing on your life as you stand and you share the unsearchable riches of Christ. Don't ever treat preaching lightly. I, I used to say to the band, <clears throat> they don't like you to repeat sermons, you know that. They'll say, oh, I heard that sermon before. I said, do you know how many times I heard that band piece? <laughs> You're saved by grace. I don't know why I keep referring to my watch, but I do because I faithfully check the time. And I can never remember what time I started. <laughs> I, I, this is the truth. This is the truth. Forgive me. Because I got another point I want to make. Spiritual vitality. These are the two terms that are being used now in the spiritual formation of theological words. Theological integrity and spiritual vitality. That means the stuff you have in your head about the truth of the gospel has got to take root in your heart and life. Spiritual vitality. We are shaped by grace. You know, I've been reading a book by Dallas Willard called The Great Omission, and he says he believes As far as visible Christian institutions of our day are concerned, discipleship is clearly optional. He says, most problems in contemporary churches can be explained by the fact that members have never decided to follow Jesus. I believe that, you know. 
The Salvation Army has been faithful. We have been shaped by grace, and we have taught the gospel or the doctrine of holiness, and sometimes people don't preach about it anymore. I said, well, you know what it means, basically, to be holy? Do you know what it means? It means to be like Jesus. Now, that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, does it? It means to be like Jesus. And we are shaped by grace. You were never meant to get pardoned and think you got a free ticket into heaven. And what happens between those two points is immaterial. That is not the gospel. Robert Mulholland, in his book on spiritual formation, he calls it an invitation to a journey. If you started with Jesus... You must continue with Jesus. You need to follow Jesus. You need to be a disciple of Jesus. You need to order your values around the values of the kingdom. You need to have your thought patterns transformed. You need to be watching things that will nurture your soul. You need to be reading things that train you in the faith. You need to be practicing the classical disciplines. How many Salvation is read the word. Spiritually read the word. How many of us have a prayer life that is not just a grocery list? We're actually connecting with God. How many of us go to worship and realize this is the fellowship that's going to nurture my faith? How many of us spend time in silence and solitude so that we can know Jesus and be like Jesus and ask the Holy Spirit to shape our lives by grace alone. And again, here are the bits that people don't like. We find this business of suffering so hard. How do I reconcile this God of grace and goodness with what's going on in the world, but what's going on in my life? H how do I get my head around cancer of a child? How do I get my head around a traffic accident when somebody spends years having operations and operations, my niece, one of them, and the guy has a few months in jail and back to driving drunk? How do you get your head around that? We're shaped by grace, beloved, and God in his grace will even use our suffering to make us better. It can make you bitter or it can make you better. And our songs say it, don't they? He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. Paul said, oh, I didn't want this thorn in the flesh. And God says, my grace is sufficient for my, you know, your weakness shows up the marvelous power of God. You know, when you suffer, Lord, loved ones, you know that it is so painful. If it's not physical, it may be emotional, it may be mental. You feel extremely vulnerable, fearful, weak. If God allows you to go through any of that, it's because he believes in you. He believes your faith will not fail. And it won't. It won't if you trust in him. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord. What more can he say than to you he has said? When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie. Grace all sufficient. Grace all sufficient will be my supply. The flames will not hurt you. I only design the dross to consume. 
and the gold to refine. Yes, he giveth more grace. Spiritual vitality means we just don't start and stop and wait for heaven. It means we're on a journey and every experience in life and the classical disciplines and the church, suffering even, everything shapes us to be more like Jesus. Paul said, I want to know him. And the power of his resurrection and share in the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. For many, many years, I wanted to know the power of his resurrection. I wanted some kind of tingly experience like Brangle had to transport my impatient, stubborn, miserable life into a sweet, kind person. I'm still on the journey. I always wanted God to do what he left up to me to do by magic. And some people have those second, third, fourth blessing experiences, but most of us here, we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Spiritual vitality, we are shaped by grace. It's time for me to quit, but I gotta just say one last thing as a salvationist. I could have added a third. I don't cry, don't say, oh my no, she's going. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. I could have said there's not just theological integrity and spiritual vitality. You're saved by grace, you're shaped by grace, but there's also practical availability. You serve by grace. Those who write about these first two say it's, they have to belong together. You can't separate them. You can't separate theological integrity and spiritual vitality because it would be like a table without legs. Well, I think John Gowans got it right. When he spoke at the Atlanta Congress, he took a three-legged stool and he talked about saving souls and growing saints and serving suffering humanity as a salvation army. It's not three missions. It's only one mission. And he said, take one away and the stool falls. By grace alone. Well, it's easy to say to this congregation, are you saved? Yes, we are. Yeah? Yes, I am. Are you going to heaven? By God's grace, I am. But are you living for Jesus? Are you living like Jesus? Is being like Jesus a hope that just possesses you so that in word and deed, I want to be like Jesus more than I want anything else in this world? And you know, it's all by grace. So I have two choruses I want us to sing today. Grace, there is my every debt to pay. Yes? Blood, the shed blood of Jesus, blood to wash my every sin away. Power to keep me spotless day by day. And this is where you, your part comes in. You need to say, for me. For me. I love the fact the Salvation Army has a kneeling bench, a penitent form, a mercy seat. And when we say to people, if you want to come, you need to know the saving grace, the shaping grace of God, the serving grace of God. When you come and kneel, there's no magic in the kneeling, but I'll tell you, there's something about standing if you can't kneel or kneeling before the Lord and knowing that this congregation is around you and supporting you. So we're gonna sing it. Do you wanna come? There's no shame in it, you know. 
Do you want to come? His grace still amazes me. Sing the chorus. song anymore in the Salvation Army. The verses are probably the best verses, I think, in the whole of the songbook that talks about when we come to Jesus with a horrible life of sin and we realize he'll forgive me. He'll forgive me all the riches of thy grace I claim over every promise I now can write my name. As I come, I come believing, as thou art, thou dost receive me. If there's somebody here, if there's one person in this congregation today who is hoping that resolutions will do it for you, friend, they won't. You need the Savior. You need the Savior. And if you don't know him today, please do not leave this meeting. Please, please do not leave this meeting without knowing your sins forgiven and you're on a journey to become like Jesus. We'll sing it again. Someone want to come. Before we come to the conclusion in our meeting, I want us to sing to be like Jesus. I, I spoke at a Wesleyan camp conference and uh, they had modern groups in to play music. And I was talking about holiness as Christ likeness. And I wanted to be like Jesus as a theme chorus. And one of the girls who was giving leadership, she thought that was such an antiquated chorus. It, it, it sort of wasn't modern enough. Beloved, that is as good as it gets when it comes to expressing the deepest desire of your heart. Let's sing it together. stand and sing it and uh, this really is I know it's a cliche but this really is the first day of the rest of your life you know that don't you this is the first day of the rest of your life 
Now, if you don't know the Lord's salvation in your heart, or you have been one of these Christians who thinks discipleship is optional, I just need to be a member, then this day, this day, this day can change it for you. Now, you may not have to tell all the whole world, but this day, let it be the first glorious day of the rest of your life. Stand. Let's pray. Lord, you have heard the prayers of our hearts this morning as we have heard you speak to us. Lord, call us. Continue to save us by your grace. Fill us with your spirit and use us by your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's my duty just to uh, say a few words of thanks to various people, and uh, I'm going to keep it very brief. You might be thinking that's unusual, <laughs> but I'll keep it very brief and simply say thank you to those who've been taking part and supporting this whole weekend. And so uh, to Jubilee Brass and to Dave and to all their organization teams, thank you for having your celebrations here and inviting us to be part of that this weekend and so we celebrate with you those 25 years and we pray God's blessing upon you for many many more of those years for our songsters for last evening and to today for sharing the grace of God by your singing thank you very much indeed and in particular for what you do week in week out doing the same thing again. Uh, to all those in the support teams who've done so much this weekend, thank you. But finally, to our guest, General, thank you for sharing the word of God with us so clearly, so plainly, and holding us accountable to responding to the Holy Spirit today. Thank you. Next, you're going to hear the uh, signature march of Jubilee Brass. Now this one is entitled Abundant Grace and uh, you may have noticed that uh, Wilson's been coordinating things for at least a good year now in just putting, giving everybody notes with things to do. And uh, the notes for this one say, this is a special piece of music written as a signature march for Jubilee Brass. It was written by Bandmaster David Rousel while on a train trip across Canada. I don't know if there's any train horns in this, are there? No? Okay. Oh, missed opportunity. 
And it featured two well-known choruses, Grace, Grace, God's Grace. And then, of course, the well-known Amazing Grace. Friends, thank you for joining with us this weekend in these celebrations. We pray God's grace upon you. And as you hear abundant grace, be mindful of that call which is ours from he who is grace, our God. abundant grace has amazing grace well we're going to have a concluding song a song that we're familiar with a song that's going to uh, send us away happy rejoicing walking in a new path maybe or walking in the pathway of duty God gives to us but before I do, I just want to add my word of thanks to the band uh, and the songsters. You have been a blessing to us this weekend, and particularly General Bond. We have enjoyed having you with us, and we're so, so very grateful that you're willing to step out of your own little Brampton, Brampton Ontario. <laughs> and come to beautiful London. Wonderful. Wonderful to have you. We're so, so very glad. But we're not going to leave you without having, and you're not going to leave us without having something. This lovely flower arrangement is just for you. Wow. And the vase and goes. And I'm not even sick. And you're not even sick. <laughs> and she's not even sick. And she does a lot of funerals. She says that. That's why one of the reasons 
Dan Jeremko has been her chauffeur. And he's been driving her yes, in the big black Mercedes. <laughs> and when it showed up, she didn't know if it was a hearse or a... <laughs> Well, anyway, it was so good to have her with us and so good to be able to share together in the fellowship. Song number 441, by the pathway of duty flows the river of God's grace. Let's stand. The band will give us the intro, intro and we'll have a sing together. <laughs> given me such support and I thank you sincerely and thank you for all your work. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge to the divisional leaders. They didn't have to come and I thank you for your support and you know Wilson this will be such joy to your heart. That hotel bill that we ended up finally in from the Comfort Inn for a hundred and twenty some dollars to this other one that was uh, far more, he said send the bill to him. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Let us pray. Father, you are the God of grace and we've experienced it with floods of blessings, grace upon grace. The music of this weekend has thrilled us, enriched us, taught us, challenged us, moved us, 
And we thank you for every member of bands, songsters, every expression of music in this core that has lifted our hearts and brought glory to your name. You are the God of grace. Lord Jesus, our Savior, where would we be without you? How we thank you today that when we go from this building today, we do not go without you. You go with us. And the presence of your life is in us by your Holy Spirit. So we go, not somehow to face the world, but triumphantly. We go and triumph by grace alone. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The songsters will conclude with the going away number. Go forth in his name. And I trust that's how we leave this place this morning, in the name of God. Don't forget to join us downstairs. If you can't stay for the food, go and have a look. <laughs>